conferences. I'm not sure I've been to one this fun yet. So congratulations, Steve, on setting up such a great conference in IDA. So thank you for having me here today. As you heard, my name is Teresa Carlson, and I run our worldwide public sector of business for Amazon Web Services. And today, we're going to talk about uh, enabling smart business, government collaboration with data analytics. So before we get going, I thought I would just give you a little bit of information about who Amazon Web Services is. How many of you have heard of Amazon? <laughs> Excellent. Well, so uh, there's three uh, major business units at Amazon. One is our consumer business, tens of millions of active consumers out there creating accounts, retail online. The next part of our business is seller services where you can go and build a business on Amazon. And the third part of our business is Amazon Web Services, our cloud computing business. And we started that business around 2006, launched our first service in 2008, and I'm very proud to say that we started our public sector business in 2010, at the end of 2010. So today with Amazon Web Services, we have hundreds of thousands of customers around the world taking advantage of cloud computing, uh, hundreds of thousands of businesses, government entities, and partners that are building their businesses around the globe utilizing cloud computing. So what does that look like when you look at a map? We have 11 regions around the world, 28 availability zones, and 52 edge locations, and we continue to build that out. In fact, last week we just announced our new region in Germany. And we've already had a region here in Singapore for quite some time. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, in fact, if you look at the little circle here, you can see where Singapore is on the map. But what is a region? Just so you know, a region is an area of the world that we have built a cluster of data centers that service our customers so that they have, have connectedness when they go out and build their service, build their solution, build their business. Now let me break that down and tell you a little bit about my business, which is the Worldwide Public Sector Business. And today we have over 800 government agencies, 3,000 educational institutions, and over 10,000 not-for-profits. And we're very proud of that because our business has actually grown very fast for a group that many times with government can have complex fine patterns, a highly regulated uh, environment. So we've really been able to uh, pace with their customers and achieve their goals in terms of what they have globally for their business and their mission. A little bit further is, if you don't know much about cloud computing, Gartner now has a magic quadrant on cloud and Amazon Web Services is up in that uh, right quadrant because again with governments uh, around the world, they sometimes look for third party validators on are you who you say you are? Are you really doing what you say you can do? And on our ability to execute and completeness of vision, you can see that we actually have taken a leader's, um, a leader's stance in the last two years. So for a young company, we're very proud of the progress that we've made in a very short period of time. Now, when we talked about earlier, Steve chatted about up here, he said, you know, protecting the, pe protecting the data and protecting the people. So every day at Amazon, we worry about security and compliance and privacy. And in fact, we've again taken a leader position in that. And this sort of gives you an example of the logos that we've amassed around security and compliance. And in my business, um, it was critical out of the gate that we were able to walk in and talk to our customers about security and compliance. And if you look at this, uh, we've been able to achieve uh, both the platforms that have been suggested for cloud computing, but also the new ones. In fact, the first one that we were able to achieve was in the U.S. was one called FedRAMP. And the U.S. sort of set the pace on what is the standards around compliance and security look like for cloud computing. And we're very proud of the fact that we were able to work with NIST in the U.S. and both set the definition of cloud, and then we set the pace on achieving the FedRAMP certification. Now around the globe, what started to happen is many of the countries around the globe are picking up and saying, what are our standards for cloud computing around security, compliance, 
privacy. So this just gives you an example of some of those. But in fact, one of the things, get it to move forward, forward, there we go. Uh, we're very proud of that AWS is the first global cloud service provider to achieve the highest level of certification here in Singapore, the MTCS level three. This is their certification, which gives organizations the clarity to utilize um, AWS to host and process their highly confidential data. Now, hopefully that's important to you. It was really important to us to achieve that. And in order for you to have the confidence in our ability to work with your data and meet your bar, we were able to achieve this. So again, that's a level of, as you're working with your cloud provider, you just have to ensure that they understand what your requirements are, that they're paying attention to that and they're achieving that. So at AWS, that's one of the things that's been really important to us. So again, as we looked at Singapore, and we said, if we really wanna do work with uh, the Singapore government and the nation here, what do we need to achieve? And this was, first we built a region here, we're very proud of that. Then we continued to grow our business, and the next level was ensuring that we could achieve your security and compliance regime. Steve also talked about innovation and what you need to be doing here to create a culture of innovation. Well, at Amazon Web Services, it's one of our key elements of really the secret sauce of what we've been able to do is just a true culture of innovation. And when the business, when we launched our first service in 2008, you can see that year we launched 24 unique services and major features. And each year we've outpaced that over and over and over and over again, learning from our experiences, failing fast, trying new things, and listening to our customers so we can really see what's working and what's effective for our customers. This year, we're going to announce more than 345 as of September. That's our number, and we continue to outpace that each year. Now, how do we make decisions around innovation and the tools that we're actually gonna create? Again, a lot of feedback comes through our customers. And in fact, I'm very proud to say that our public sector customers really provide a lot of that feedback. And um, on the security and compliance front, in fact, Many of our services we consider and think about actually are have the security and compliance um, thoughtfulness built into that because each and every service that we launch, we're, we're considering how can a customer use that? How can they take advantage of that? How can they build that into their mission and program? And in fact, talking about failing fast in a pace of innovation, if you don't have a platform that you can take advantage of, that provides you the opportunity to fail fast, 